Okay, so welcome back to our uh, discussion about uh, breeding tips. This is already the part 2 of TL Bros Game Farm uh, breeding tips. But before we proceed, uh, please uh, subscribe. Click on the subscribe button um, and notification bell so that you will be uh, always notified and um, stay updated on the latest uh, uh, features and videos that we post on our YouTube channel. So most probably, you'll be seeing a lot of um, updates from our, from our game farm about breeding tips and game fall farming tips through our YouTube channel. So I request everybody to please uh, subscribe and click the, the, the notification bell for you to be able to stay updated about the latest videos that we post in our game farm, uh, in our uh, YouTube channel. All right, so we now proceed to different breeding techniques. So we now discussed, we've discussed all about bloodlines. We've discussed um, all about uh, the phenotype genes, um, what the male rooster can provide, selection, proper selection of uh, materials. Now, let's now I would now share to you and um, discuss with you different breeding techniques. We now first discuss the line breeding method. Okay, so this is one of the uh, widely known um, breeding technique that we are currently using as breeders. But um, again, as I told you a while ago in my previous videos, it is important that you stay or go back to your own objective. So what is your objective? Is your objective to maintain a specific line? Your objective to create a new line? Or basically increase its potency. So for line breeding, the objective of this is to maintain a certain bloodline. Okay? So maintain a certain bloodline for you to be able to uh, keep it from generation to generation. Okay? So the different line breeding techniques are, can be, first is father to daughter mating or vice versa. Can be mother to son mating. And can also be cousin, aunt, or uncle mating. So this line breeding is basically um, a breeding uh, based on the family. No, it's a, it's a breeding uh, within the family. That's why it's called line breeding because you're just getting the bloodline of a certain family. Now, you could see here in my uh, slide that uh, I put an X mark on a brother to sister meeting. So for beginners, uh, especially to those who are um, trying out no, uh, or new in the breeding uh, process in the breeding, in breeding game fouls, you might consider being more careful in terms of doing the brother-sister meeting, mainly because this is, in a way, a different um, type of breeding method. This is a type of breeding wherein you lock in the genes and you create your own gene pool. Later on, I'm going to discuss this, maybe on my next um, video. But for now, you have to ignore this first, okay? You should not do the brother-to-sister mating for now, okay? So for the reason that there would be a lot of uh, problems, no? It's hard actually to do the inbreeding because product, uh, your production would be, uh, first, there would be a lot of problems. Uh, when you do the brother-sister mating, um, your, the offsprings or the children would be uh, sickly, we get, uh, will be very weak in terms of fighting, and the standards of that you want to see uh, uh, in terms of um, production 
uh, you cannot really see it consistently in uh, in breeding or the brother sister breeding. Okay, so with all of this, actually, the main objective going back is to really maintain a certain line. In that, if you do this, you now produce after a, a series of um, different breeding methods or a series of uh, after a time, no, from generation to generation, when you do this kind of breeding, you now you're now going to produce your own seed fowl. Or pure, in a way, you could say pure chickens uh, because of this kind of line breeding. So let me explain to you how you do this, okay, in detail, this line breeding. Alright, so, sorry, I just have to remove this. Alright, so, let's now talk about line breeding in detail. How are we going to do this? Alright, so, as I told you, that we're going to now do a certain breeding now i have this 5k sweater line okay this is one of my very very good chicken uh, this rooster is my very uh, my favorite no um he won a lot of times uh he's very strong all that all his characteristics the body configuration the power the fighting style the history no, it's very very good, and I want to maintain that. I want to maintain this rooster, okay. Now, for you to maintain this rooster, no, or to maintain the blood of this rooster, or to get again another blood ring, because eventually this rooster, when grows, uh, when he grows older and older, uh, he will be, uh, he will grow uh, less competitive in terms of fighting, and in terms of breeding. Less potent because he's, 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 he's becoming older. Now, I want to breed him. I want to maintain him. So, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to get this specific rooster. Take note. The specific rooster that you want. You have to get that. Okay? Now, I breed it, for example, to a Boston Roundhead. So, I get an, a, a, a hen. So, basically, going back, you have to select again. Or I go back to you again. You have to select the best, okay? For the hens, you have to ensure that the hens that you're going to use have very strong track record or history of uh, winning and uh, history of good bloodline. So if you mix this sweater sweater and um, the Boston Roundhead, you now produce what we call a half enough or a 50% and 50%. 50% sweater, 50% Boston, right? So that is what we usually, uh, that is the result. When you mix a sweater bloodline, take note, uh, this is a pure, pure sweater bloodline, okay? And basically, a Boston on it. You now get a 50-50, 50% sweater, 50% Boston. We call this as our first generation. Okay? That is the first generation. So basically, you would see that um, um, it's, a diff it's a cross. Okay? You blend different bloodlines. But take note, you only get 50% or half of the bloodline of the rooster that you want. So only one half. Okay? In the first, for the first gen, first generation, okay, you only get one half. All right, so now the, of course, definitely, um, there would be male and female sweater Bostons, okay, in their offspring. So if you want to maintain the bloodline of the father, you have to cross this father to his son. I, oh, sorry, sorry, um, to his daughter. So you get the female offspring or the female child. You now, of course, it would take a lot of time, about seven months, eight months. You can now cross him back, the female, to his father. Okay? So 
once you cross him back to the father, the result would be already a 75% sweater and 25% Boston. Okay? This is now what we call second generation. Okay. So, when you hear about one half sweater, one half Boston, this is the one half sweater and one half Boston. Now, some when you hear from breeders, this is a three-fourth sweater and a one-fourth one fourth Boston. That means that you have a 75% sweater and 25% Boston. So, this is the three-fourth. Sorry. Um, so, this one would be three-fourths. Three-fourths already. And this one would be uh, one-fourth. Okay? So, that is what we usually call our breeding here in the Philippines. Now, uh, just for you to know, when you talk uh, to different breeders, and they say about the three-fourth bloodline, half and half bloodline, now you understand. Okay? So, that's it. Again, there would be offsprings. Okay? Now, I want again to maintain, going back, we need to maintain this bloodline. Okay? Now, from the off offspring of the second generation, you get again the female and cross it back to the father. Or uh, this might be again his, um, her uh, grandfather. Okay? So, you get the hen of the second generation and bring it back to the rooster, original rooster. Now, you get the third generation already. The offspring of this uh 5K sweater and the female um, uh, second generation of this roost, uh, of this male would now give you the third generation or the 85.87.5% uh, sweater and the 12.5% Boston. This is now what we call the 7818s. Okay, the third sorry, the third generation. Is now what we call 7 8 sweater and 1 8 Boston. So basically, you're now going to um, get the pure bloodline almost. Almost, you're almost there. The pure bloodline of the original rooster, which is your 5k sweater bloodline, the one that you really want. Okay? And now again, actually, the third gen. It's basically, for the 3rd gen, actually, you can still fight until the 3rd gen. For me, you can still fight the rooster or the male children until the 3rd gen. For the 4th gen and the 5th gen, this is something that you should treasure. Okay? Why? For the 4th gen, this is almost close to the pure. Now, for the 4th gen... Uh, get the again the female, cross it back to the five, uh, your, to your original rooster, the same rooster. Okay, should not change the rooster. This should be the same rooster. Because if you change if you change another rooster, then this is not any more line breeding. You always use the same rooster. Remember that. So, the same rooster, cross to the female offspring, for the third gen. You now get the fourth generation or a 93.7%. So for me, this is already a material for breeding. I now almost almost get um, the exact characteristics, the exact features of the uh, original rooster I'm breeding with. Okay. And finally, you now proceed to the fifth generation or the purest form already for me it's already the purest form you now get the throwback what i say when i say throwback this one is you the offspring of this one you will get to see almost the same the features physical appearance the head body configuration 
even the crowing or the sound of the rooster, of the original rooster, you will get this already. So imagine after five years of breeding, you get back again your original rooster, which now we call the seed fowl or the throwback line fowl. This is a very, very expensive type of rooster. Why? Well, imagine you've spent five years trying to breed this rooster. So, if you're going to just sell it for a cheap price, then you're not a breeder. Okay? Because imagine the hardships, imagine the time that you've spent on building this bloodline. So, this is my most treasured, actually, the fifth generation or the seed fowl. This is my most treasured rooster or most treasured bloodline. Okay? Actually, you can do this also to your females. Um, just have to you do the same technique. But of course, you maintain the female and you cross the female, original female, to their sons. To her sons. Okay? So the same technique applies, but you just use the female. Okay, so with this, I guess I will end up I will end first my uh, video at this stage. For uh, to, for those who have questions or clarifications, you may feel uh, comment on this YouTube channel or just send me a message at my Facebook page. And please again, I uh, would like to request everybody to please subscribe uh, to our YouTube channel for you to be updated always. And um, this would be a very big help as well for us uh, in the El Post Game Farm, for us to be able to uh, promote these um, videos because we really want to help our Cambodian and Vietnamese friends to really know and learn more about the art of game fall breeding and the art of game fall farming. Okay, so thank you everyone and have a great day.